so one of the things I've been particularly interested in is uh, underrepresented groups of students, uh, whether you're looking at, at women um, who are taking uh, mathematics, pre-calculus and calculus, uh, whether you're looking at, at African-American students or Hispanic students. Um, these, these are populations that traditionally have been underrepresented in the science and engineering and, and mathematical science fields. And uh, as, as we've seen, uh, they're as well prepared, they're as capable of succeeding, but there are a number of roadblocks that, that they encounter. They're also very fragile. And pre-calculus or calculus, uh, these are challenging courses and students stumble. Very good students stumble when they get into these courses. And if a student is feeling fragile, if a student is questioning, do I really belong in this course? Uh, for the woman who looks around and sees that, that she's in a course where it's all white males around her, um, or for somebody from another underrepresented group goes into the class and feels that they're an outsider there, but they feel they should be okay because they've been good in math. And then they get back the results of the first test and they get a C on it. Well, I thought I was an A student. I got a C on this course. Maybe I don't belong here. And that compounds with this feeling of looking around. I don't look like the other students in this class. I thought I belonged here because I was really good in mathematics, but maybe I'm not as good as I thought I was. We, when we did our first study, this came across very clearly, especially with women, and we had a large enough group of women in the study that we were actually able to, to come to some, so, some clear consensus about what was going on. What we saw was that, that for women who intended to be engineers, a C in the course, the math course that they were taking, was absolutely devastating. For men, not so much, especially for white men, not so much. A C, they were willing to, to go with. But we found that women dropped out at three times the rate as, of men if they got a C in, in that first college math class. Entity mindset is the belief either I'm a person who's good at mathematics, or I'm not a person who's good at mathematics. And a lot of instructors have an entity mindset. They've got the students who are good at mathematics, and if they stumble, well, you know, okay, they did a little stumble, and, and that's okay. And you've got the students who you decide are not good in mathematics, and if they stumble, well, it must be because they're not good in mathematics. And one of the problems with a student who comes in with an entity mindset who believes, okay, I'm good in mathematics, and they stumble. And now they say, gee, I must have been mistaken in my belief that I'm good at mathematics. I'm going to find a different way to go with my college career. As opposed to that is the growth mindset, which is that this whole process of learning mathematics is a growth process. You're going to stumble. Stumbling, making mistakes, not knowing what to do, doing poorly on some tests, that's part of the process. It's part of the learning and growing process. And so to have an instructor that realizes that that has this growth mindset and so realizes that, that students are going to struggle, students are going to fail, and students need encouragement to move on, and then manage to get their students to adopt the same ideas, that to realize that if I don't do well on this first test, it doesn't mean because I'm not a math person. It means it's because th these are difficult mathematical ideas that I need to struggle with. And I need help and encouragement, and I need some supports, and that's fine. You're capable of doing this, and you can move forward. And so this is an important part of what I see coming out of the current work on pre-calculus and also on calculus, um, is, is recognizing the importance of the growth mindset, setting up a milieu that enables students to experience growth mindset, and, and realize that, that having some failures is all part of the process, that, uh, that they can succeed, and that we're there to help them succeed. Once you, you instill that, you get many more of the students who actually do succeed. I'm enormously optimistic right now. 
I, I see lots of change, lots of activity going on. Um, every five years, the Conference Board of the Mathematical Sciences surveys math departments across the country. And one of the insights from the latest survey I found very interesting because it showed 60% of math departments have made changes to their pedagogical style in the past decade. And I'm seeing a lot of experimentation around the country, a lot of exploration, a lot of trying out new ideas. And, and I'm very much encouraged. I, I think we're at a point where things are really changing, and they're changing for the better.